Welcome back everyone. Uh, part two. This might not be a long video. Let's see, see how we go. I just spoke to the police whilst we were off uh, and they are expecting a closure here. Uh, it's not so much actually because of what was happening at the other end, i.e. Parliament Square when we came in. It's because there is another disparate group forming at Trafalgar Square that they're expecting to march this way to join with the other larger group that's already started to form at Parliament Square, which we saw in part one. So, officer's words, I quote, we'll play it by ear. So they don't know, but they are expecting, they don't know what time, sorry, but they are expecting a shutdown of horse cars today. Utterly extraordinary. But not really, to be honest, uh, a huge surprise. It is chocker, chocker, chocker block here. Absolutely jammed. Here's our favourite tour guide again. Been a while since we've seen him. One second, let's uh, see if he gives us a, a bit of a thumbs up. He's always really patient with his groups as well, to be honest. Which is definitely a huge, uh, a huge plus. He definitely deserves uh, a thumbs up from this channel. I'm going to make a joke with him in a minute. He's going to be like. <laughs> He's telling, uh, telling one of his group that the best way to go is by river. And that's actually true. Better to go by river than by, uh, by tube or by, by bus. Not only because it's faster, uh, it has built in aircon on the tube. Sorry, on the. Uh, say the tube, on the Thames Clipper ferry, uh, and most importantly of all, it's fast. However, that comes at a price, guys, it's very expensive. Uh, I seem to remember a return ticket something between 15 and 18 pounds, which, uh, which is a lot of money, isn't it? For example, for what, a 20 to 30 minute journey? I think it is, maximum. Waiting for the gatesman to move behind me. I was just letting everybody know about the best tour guide in Central London. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Ah, pleasure. So, what we do is we have the arches. Okay, so we've got a recognisable chitsman. Who actually was the gatesman, I think, yesterday, was he not? That's my mind is failing me. But yes, folks, he is London's finest tour guide, without a doubt. There are others that are great, but he's the only one that's magnificent. And maybe one day I will, uh, I'll have a chat with him. Maybe I'll drop, uh, drop his tours into the channel. I don't normally do that, but to be fair, I have uh, mentioned Ron on camera before, the Israeli tour guide, who's also absolutely outstanding. He's not here today, actually. Ron is very rarely here, but he's certainly one of the best as well. So that group are off. Uh, and being an ex-military man, he knows exactly how to keep his group in the right place, how to keep them respectful, and every single bit of information he ever gives them seems to be like crazy precise, like really in-depth information, historical detail, military terminology. I mean, what else would you want if you're getting a tour here at Horse Guards? Am I right? Okay, so now I'm half tempted to go over there, but at the moment we've got about 15 cameras, uh, including two or three people with multiples. Hey, don't worry, just for... <laughs> you want to be on the film? Yeah. Which, where are you from? Uh, Which country? Croatia. You're from Croatia? Croatia? Hey, say hello to everyone in Croatia, in Croatian. <laughs> I hope, was that a nice thing or was that a bad thing? <laughs> Greetings for everyone and especially for Luka Modric, the famous football player who always uh, make us so proud. Ah, he does make you proud. Well, I mean, beautiful country, Croatia, so... Yeah. Hey guys, what do you think about this though, the, the horses and so on? you surprised at how many tourists there are here watching? It's a tradition, it's a tradition and uh, uh, the English are a lot of in that. They respect uh, the formality and tradition, so... Uh, Very much so. Yep. So it's the, it's a part, anything, the part of, of old traditional England. So 
Very much it's so. It's nice. It's part uh, uh, of nationalism, but on a good aspect. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a good way to look at it, actually, yeah. Yep, massively so. And you guys are here at an interesting time, because on Monday this week, you see the signs that are on the wall? Yeah. They changed the signs on Monday. These are new signs. Until Monday, it said, don't touch the reins. Now the signs say, don't touch the horse. Right. They changed the rules on Monday. After uh, every week or...? No, just th this, this Monday that passed. So after, after how many years do you want? After five, the, the previous sign was there for one year. Yeah. They just put this up on Monday. It now says, don't touch the horse. But some tourists are still touching the horse, yes, like this lady. See this? Like this lady. Crazy, she eh? She could not resist. Exactly know? that, yep. Yeah. Some people just don't want but to follow the rules. You will, you will ruin uh, the moment. You will ruin the order if you uh, don't uh, follow the rules. Exactly. Yeah. Is because, it? Uh, it's, it's the, the, those are the negative aspects of tourism. Yeah, mass massively. Massively. Yep. You've explained it perfectly. And your English is better than my Croatian is ever going to be, I tell you. Yeah, is it? Yeah. Where are you from? I'm English. You're English? I'm English. You're, I mean, honestly, your English is excellent. It really is. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you kindly. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. And thank you for saying hi to everybody in the video. Uh, and best wishes to everyone in Croatia. <laughs> thank you. Have a good day, guys. Wow, that was amazing, eh? He perfectly explained, okay, perfectly explained the differences between the negative and positive aspects of having a ceremonial guard here at Horse Guards. Okay, beautifully and eloquently put by that Croatian gent and his lovely wife. What a pleasure. This is an interesting one because they are really, really close. Look at this lady here with the camera. Okay, she's moved back. So I think the problem we're going to have, if problem's the right word, he just told her to move back. She's not, she seems to think it's some kind of a joke. Unbelievable, eh? Now the curious thing, I noticed in the background, as we were talking to the Croatian gent and uh, his lovely partner, um, we noticed in the background that there was a woman mauling, I mean quite literally, her hands all over the horse, okay? That's curious because you all saw in part one, or I'm assuming you did, if you didn't, part one is linked in the pinned comment. The previous boxman who was in this box was not taking any nonsense. Now it's very curious that we have this massive difference between one trooper and another trooper. One, make it very firm, don't touch the horse. Next one, not a word. What's that all about, folks? What do we think? Curious, isn't it? Exceptionally curious. Now, if only every tourist that we had here was as lovely, polite, and respectful as that Croatian couple, this would be glorious in how smoothly things would operate here, etc. But sadly, and the reason that some people do get called out for bad behavior is that we get a lot of people that just display you know, almost, you know, behavior that's often beyond comprehension, you know, and those are the people that get labeled as idiots. It's funny because a lot of people pull me up on that. Hey, you call everyone idiots. That's not true. I call idiots idiots. There's a big difference, etc. I'm always keen to emphasize the fact that way above 99% of everyone that Visits horse guards is exceptionally polite. Look at this tour bus, guys. Look at this. Londonbusforhire.com. But it doesn't look like anyone hired it because it's empty. There's nobody on Londonbusforhire.com. Now, I've seen riot police going to the side streets. There are lots of Met officers along Whitehall. As we can see, there are massive numbers of people here. Yeah. Try and squeeze us through. That group is from the uh, Oxford School of English. And it's funny actually, because last weekend when I was in Oxford, I actually saw that group walking around. So they're now obviously in London. All right, let's get ourselves in if we can. Probably not easy, guys, given uh, there's a red-hatted man with his three cameras again. Extraordinary, it is absolutely extraordinary. Luckily, the gate was going straight back in again. It's 
So we're going to be pretty far back, guys, from the action, but we're going to see very clearly if anyone touches the horse or not. Look, somebody touching the horse right now. Exact opposite to what we were seeing here with the previous box one. Curious, eh, folks? If we glance across the front, you can see how busy it is. Look at it. Oh, this bro's touching the horse. There we are. There's another one, guys. Now, we'll stay here for a little bit longer, then we'll go to the other end and see if there's any difference between this boxman, who's saying nothing to anyone, uh, and the other boxman. Unavoidable, of which that packs here today. There's no way around it. We're going to get hats, guys, and cameras uh, in the video for the moment. Besides that, we'll switch the camera off and go home. Look how it's heaving at the front of Madness. Like what? It's, it's very curious because I noticed the one that was before. Did you see that when he said don't touch the horse? But this, this chap is not saying a thing. Very odd. The difference is, isn't there, to be honest. I think it was probably gone round that said about hey, you know, new rules, but I think they've also said to the troopers that you can either shout or not shout at your own discretion. That would make sense. But that in, in turn is a problem because, on the one hand, if they're saying don't touch the horse, but some people don't tell them not to touch it, what's the point in having the sign in the first place? Said don't touch the horse, but what if the horse touches? It's funny, you know, but you notice that the previous guy was telling them not to touch his horse, but here, everyone's touching this one. He's taking it in, he, this guy is full right now. He's just, you know, he's, he's, he doesn't want to shout. You know, we are sad. He's too chill to shout. Oh, 
Yeah, me too. I, in fact, he's been here a long time, hasn't he? Let's be honest. Frying pan fire situation there. <laughs> back people because I can't speak because there's so many people in the line filming that if I'm if I'm talking in the rating like I like to do the problem is uh, it's on everyone else's videos and that's not really fair it happens sometimes but you know if somebody comes and stands next to me uh, and I'm already talking it's their problem but they were there before me so it's only fair that I move away and not end up uh, inadvertently narrating 10 different videos at once so let's get ourselves back to this end see what's happening here. So we'll try. We'll try, there we are. Uh, now we've got a much better spot, pretty much in front of the horse. Second, we don't yet know, not having seen very much of her, whether or not this uh, lady trooper is going to say anything if somebody touches her horse. So we've got enough at the other end to know that the trooper, who incidentally, by the way, the trooper at the other end, very experienced fellow, he's been in blues for longer than I've been filming here. Uh, he's a lovely guy, so uh, I think he just doesn't feel like shouting, and it's his prerogative. Let's be honest, folks, nobody should be compelled to shout uh, at Toys for the Idiocy. Uh, I did think we would see much more of a police presence at the front gate today, it being so busy. Uh, after the police presence we saw at the front gate yesterday. But that I can see, uh, I think there are only two officers here today. That said, there's no guard change, so... <laughs> Will anybody touch at this end? I wonder. We're also expecting that part two will be disturbed by either a closure. Oh, there we go. She just said no. Excellent. Okay, so notice differences again between the boxman. Other end? No response. This trooper? No. Don't touch the horse. Shook her head, you saw it. So at least now we're getting more footage over time just to get a bit of a comparison and to see how these rules are being enforced. <laughs> God, I don't think I've ever heard a photographer say cheese that many times. I think I'll just take the picture, bro. <laughs> This dude was actually going to jump on the horse who walked over so fast. He's like, that's my steed. Oh, she's back. <laughs> Gets lit by the horse.
Much more short this time, folks. I'm super glad that I moved. After his picture in the pub down the road. how it should work. Very nice of her actually. She picked up the rubbish so I can move it out of the way. Great to see uh, to see a tourist doing that. If somebody steps on that plastic bottle and it pops, it'll really freak the horse out. We've had that once before where the bus uh, rode over a bottle and it popped. Super noisy, like a mini explosion. Okay, so the protest seems to be starting, folks. Let's have a little look at what's going on here. What's this one? I think this one actually, let's move away from horse guards for a minute, see what's going on here. I think it's, I think it's trans rights. Let's have a look. It's gonna be a bit loud, but hey, let's have a look. Is this not trans rights and free Palestine mixed together? I'm saying leave trans kids alone on one uh, one guy's banner there. Something of a motley crew. Healthcare is a human right. Protect trans youth. Snooker ball right in front of the camera. Being officially filmed. Thank you. Okay, so we've just given a, a little card, guys. There it is. Not sure if the camera. We are 
here to stay. So, so like the Oh, it's a sticker. Guys, I'm going to stick the sticker on my head. <laughs> Some people are very funny. Oh, somebody's got like a police sign. What's this? Not your political weapon. Gosh, it's a lot of people actually coming along here. A little bit quieter now, which I guess for the horses is, uh, is a good thing. It's a second pro camera person following along. So guys, I'm going to be in the uh, Trans Rights March uh, video. No idea where that will be published, but I'm in it. Police officer is thinking to himself, hmm, I'd much rather be policing a football match or uh, anything else for that matter. Okay, that was a brief and interesting one. I'm not sure how exactly uh, they're going to be accepted by the largely pro-Palestinian uh, Arabic Muslim crowd uh, once they meet at the other end, but hey, I guess they know that there's another protest the same day. Now, interestingly enough, folks, I've spotted the officer coming out of the gates and the corporal of horse. They are going to decide together, I'm sure, whether or not to remove the horses. Here we are, look. In fact, it is a lieutenant, ladies and gents, we've got here today, lieutenant, two pips. Corporal of horse, closest to the camera, just beyond him, the officer is a lieutenant. I know you were expecting me to say lieutenant, but hey guys, I do know the difference between a lieutenant and a lieutenant. And this fine looking fellow, who's crossing over to go to the MOD, uh, is a lieutenant. Now, I don't know actually whether he individually would have made the call, uh, or whether the corporal of horse will make the call, or whether it'll go above both, and it'll be the... Uh, Chiefs over at London District that'll make the court. One second, I'll see if I can ask the corporal of horse if he uh, thinks that they're going to close today. I, I personally think they will, based on what we've seen, but oh, yeah, they've got a trooper, the stableman trooper is here. The yard is generally pretty much closed at this point, so I think we're getting very close to a shutdown, personally. wait and see. Very unusual actually to have uh, an officer out of the front during the day. In fact, almost, I don't remember the last time that happened. King's Troop last summer probably. Very rare. I'm seeing massive amounts of people forming up at Trafalgar Square. They're going to march this way as the uh, Free Palestine protest from Parliament Square marches along Whitehall towards Trafalgar Square. So those two giant groups will meet at some point along Whitehall. That will determine, I guess, whether or not they decide to uh, to close the gates here, but I think with the Corporal of Force being out and about, it's very, very likely they're going to close it. I will try and ask him, folks, if he's, uh, if he's got a moment. One second. Sorry, Chief, you think you think you're uh, going to close? Well, you're going to close, so, yeah. Definitely confirm, yeah? yeah? 100%. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, so yes, Corporal of Force just confirmed, folks. One o'clock, which is in exactly... 25 minutes they'll be shutting down closing the gates heard it from the chief himself he's now the senior officer here NCO non-commissioned officer senior and get my words right senior he is the senior such a mouthful this army stuff he is the senior non-commissioned officer on duty at horse guards the corporal of horse so great to hear from him uh, and thanks for the confirmation we now know guys one o'clock now, there's a chance the gates might be heaped closed before that, simply because of the sheer number of people that are forming at one end of Whitehall. But the lucky thing is, because I started a part two, kind of anticipating that might happen, uh, it will happen in this part two, even if I need to just stand here for 20 minutes and wait for it. But at least we've got happy tourists and horses. And the funny thing is, none of these tourists know at the moment that shortly it's all going to be closed. The guy with the riding crop is, is the boss on the ground today. Yeah, uh, they're closing everything at one o'clock because there's uh, two huge protest groups coming along. The, the one that just went this way over the other side was trans rights. That end and the other end coming together, a free Palestine. 
like huge, like 50,000, 60,000. So uh, they're going to close the gates here at one, but around that time they'll start to arrive. Where do you want to watch the protest? If you didn't see inside yet, it's definitely worth a look. Yeah, we were. I'm not sure she was so uh, happy. <laughs> no, my pleasure, my pleasure. A lot of people saying free the horses. In fact, oh, that's a lovely dress as well. Look, blowing in the wind. Very breezy here actually today. Flags and banners are going to be definitely problematic. If they've got those huge banners that they unfurl during those protests, typically they're going to fly off. I guarantee it's way too windy to be carrying very, very large banners that are spread across five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people. So I think what we'll do, folks, uh, is just stay at the front there. Corporal of Horse is obviously making sure and deciding whether or not they're going to close before one. So by, if it doesn't close in the next 15, 20 minutes, one o'clock, they're heaving those gates open and they will padlock them and everything's going to be locked down big time. Guaranteed. Now the good news is that a lot of people uh, seem to have people that were filming before on the front have left. This is great. Now I've got a bit more space to move around. I move around with all folks. I'm actually hoping the protest arrives a bit earlier because if it does, uh, I can get into the middle of it in the video before it ends. But let, let's see. Maybe this video will be allowed to run a little bit longer. We'll see. I hope they're trying to persuade the, uh, the little kid with the earphones to go close to the horse, but she's, she's really scared. Bless her. Oh, it calmed her down now. Look, she's actually happy and smiling. Bless. <laughs> That's really cute. Now this dude over here just read to his kid the uh, the sign, pointed to it. Don't touch the horse. Thank you. Those folks are the, the good moments. Okay, like that. She was having a mini meltdown. Parents sort of said to her, "Look, it's okay." And then she calmed down and got a perfect picture. Our next decision will be whether or not we should move from this end to the other end. I'm kind of on the fence a teeny weeny bit. I think the better option. Oh, she's having a meltdown again. One second. Poor kid. At least she had a peaceful moment. They got a perfect picture. Oh. Just in time, actually, before they close the gate. Super windy, folks. I'm worried that my hat's going to blow away. Okay, let's have one more wander in the yard. This will be our last little uh, wander around. The reason it will be the last wander around is that I want to be at the front when they close the gates and lock them. Uh, and that is only a matter of time. You can probably hear the kids having a massive meltdown in the background. Perrin's got super lucky that she was settled down just for that key minute to get a picture. People are getting up super close today. Oh, she's 
take a bit of the wall. <laughs> seen that here quite a few times. It's actually quite funny. Tourists are taking a video, then they move around to follow the guard, only to realise that they're filming a brick wall. By the way, for those of you that asked about what they sell in the guard shop, folks, it's the usual bits and pieces, you know, little teddies, cards, there are some little kids' t-shirts and sleepy stuff, uh, spoons, little, you know, figures and figurines. Um, and I think those are magnetic uh, things that you... Yeah, that says magnets. Uh, it's two... Two pounds each or three for five pounds. I've just noticed. I've never actually looked at that before. But yeah, look, to give you an idea of the magnets here, look. Two pounds each. That's actually a bargain, to be honest, folks, in central London terms. Magnets, two pounds each or three for five pounds. Notice up here, guys, look, I point it. See the, uh, this one. Beef eater. Some of them are usual on this stuff, but a couple of them are super cute. The beef eater one is beautiful. And there's also one with uh, a lifeguard trooper. Look, in the box up there, see that? That's really, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'll tell the boss of the shop when I see him, not on camera. That's really underpriced for central London, okay? Three magnets for five pounds? That is an absolute bargain. I mean, three for 10 would be a bargain, but three for five is an absolute giveaway. Okay, so that hopefully, uh, few of you asked in the comments yesterday but many times before I've noticed that you've asked me to show you what's in the guard shop uh, and that ladies and gents is what is in the guard shop just a little, little uh, mementos and souvenirs of London and the guard this guy's massively touching and rubbing the horse look hands all over it look at this. I'm guessing you can't read. I mean, he said thank you to the trooper after breaking the rules. Interesting, eh, guys? Very. So I've got two troopers all at the same time, one of whom is uh, telling Taurus not to touch. Uh, and the other isn't saying a word. No. Kid rubbing the horse. Inconsistency is a curious thing, isn't it? <laughs> Exactly 15 minutes to one. So get ready for the uh, the trains to come out. can't actually even criticise the tourists that are touching the horse on this side, strictly speaking, because they, they might well have not seen the sign. Now, I'm not excusing them, but that would be uh, one explanation, would it not? If there was a sign on either, if there was a sign on either side, you know, look, I don't know if she's feeding or touching or what she's doing. Both, by the looks of it. She's having a little nibble of her hand. Oh, Brazil's in the house. Oh, Brazil. the uh, quarter two bell. Hey, let's bring our kid and put it right in front of the horse. Get myself out of the way, folks, because the gate's going to just arrived. But luckily, he's not getting over to that spot where he's standing in, but it could have been me getting shouted at or pushed out of the way. It's super curious to have all of these golden leaves on the ground. 
in August. Oh. There we go again. I think actually if we had somebody here with a, a megaphone constantly screaming don't touch the roof people would not not listen because they wouldn't understand I think a lot of people here do not, do not understand or cannot read English and therein lies the problem no, he's back, Mr. Super Touchy Feely, look. Odd guys, isn't it? Very. And we, oh, here we go again. Oh. Sorry, sorry. Okay, so many people here. Troopers just arrived to water the horse. And now, is horse going to drink, folks? That's the question. Or oh, is the trooper going to get drenched? Are you going to do the best? Thankfully, no. Oh, no, no, it's okay. Thankfully, I am. I follow you on YouTube. Brilliant. Oh. Brilliant. The truth is not going to get a wash, folks. Look. Proper rub down. I'm generally surprised to see this because today it's super, super mild compared to the days we've seen the horse being watered before. Look at that, he's all right in there. Let me back a teeny bit out of the way of the trooper. I actually decided to take the shortcut through the box. Smart, very smart. Thank you. Okay, folks, let's go back to the other end. That was super, super funny there. <laughs> Somebody said to me, <laughs> Are you busking the park? And I said, Thankfully not. <laughs> oh, good lord. It's quite funny, actually. Right, we're back at the other end. Oh, London Walks. Okay, I haven't seen that group before. Hey, let's uh, put our kid in danger, shall we? Look. Well, another tourist just marches in while he's trying to get a side picture of his kid. Look. It's a dad calling down, or rather kneeling down on the uh, on the right-hand side. Yeah. Making everyone wait and putting his kid in extreme danger. Very smart, eh? Good, great parenting there. That is just weird. Not worth the risk, guys, is it? Okay, so we've got 10 minutes. This is the crowd that we walked away from a moment ago at this end, uh, where everybody's got their hands all over the horse. Uh, especially happy, smiley dude in green, who's uh, probably gone over to pest the other horse now. Actually, wait, let's see, guys, if, the, if this troop will tell him not to touch her horse because she has been indicating to other people that get a bit too feely that they shouldn't. So let's see. Let me try and squeeze through. People with luggage all over the floor here. Okay, we're back at the front. Let's wait for, uh, for Mr. Green. There he is. This will be very interesting, actually, to see if the same tourist gets a different response from a different trooper. So let's hope he decides to approach the horse and see what uh, what happens at this end. Even though, oh, here we go. Get ready. She just said, Trooper just said, don't touch the horse. Extraordinary, isn't it? One second, let me tell him. Ah, it went too quick. Damn it. I wanted to point out the sign to him. <laughs> he took his girlfriend's hand and marched off. Isn't it extraordinary? Just a few words, don't touch the horse. And boom, horse is not touched. Very, very, very curious afternoon. It's been this afternoon, hasn't it? Very curious. It's about to get even more freaky, guys, when, uh, when they close the gate shortly. 
It's exactly nine minutes at this point, so they're closing. Go, hold up, Gajo. Hold up, Gajo. Oh, you gap, gap, or never. Ready? You could have a hole. Oh, hold Ready? 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 Luckily, um, because everyone is touching the other horse and the troopers are not saying anything, uh, everyone else that's filming is at the other end. The only person that's filming this end, this horse and this trooper, at the moment is me. Uh, and I do feel quite privileged. See, again, brilliant stuff. She's, the trooper shook her head, she said no. Massive respect, hey, folks for this trooper out here all alone at the front. No one else is around and she's making sure no one touches the horse. Again, look, don't touch the horse. See the surprise in the kid's face. Again, it just takes one or two to set a fine example. We saw it in part one and we're seeing it here again. This lady trooper showing how it should be done. Brilliant. So what happens if we get some massive idiot touching our horse? In fact, at the moment, this end is looking busy. The other end, there's a huge number of people are left waiting to go up. Oh, this is touching Philly from the other end. Uh, again, see, Trooper said, "Don't touch the horse." Unfortunately, this time it's the uh, the, the young lady with uh, with the headphones that was having him out done earlier. But the trooper said to her as well, "Don't touch the horse." Fair's fair. Oh, now she's crying about it. Better to have uniformity, I guess. Completely ignoring the fact that girl was already there waiting for a picture. Who's up next? Again, see, don't touch the horse. Ah, bro just got it. Isn't she magnificent, folks, this, uh, this trooper? Again, don't touch the horse. Exactly. Love it. Absolutely love it. This is what we were hoping to see. And as it spreads, I'm convinced over time that all of the troopers in both regiments will take this approach. And eventually all of these idiots that go up with their paws, dirty germ-covered uh, hands in central London, all over the horse's face. It's about eight or nine people in total already, uh, she's told, just in this last five minutes segment. So I don't know how many people she would have told in the hour she would have been out here, but I'm guessing in all likelihood more than a hundred. Oh, there we go. Massive group. So we're going to get a lot of heads popping up in the bottom of the frame. Yeah. 
some pet nuts, buy a lamb of soup. Oh, again, see that? Don't touch the horse. Brilliant. I do feel a little bit sorry for the, uh, the girl with pink headphones, but rules are rules, folks. I did say before, I do think there'll be times when troopers will make exceptions, but generally speaking, it's probably not a good idea. Why? Because if other tourists that are already here see some people touching the horse, they're going to follow the example, aren't they? That's the problem. So it's got to be a, a bit of an all or nothing, I guess. But the, uh, the weeks ahead will be interesting. This is the first time, this is the first video that we've captured in a week with massive consistency and a trooper multiple times giving verbal instructions to overzealous tourists, don't touch the horse. Now, luckily, uh, for me, for you guys, who are probably sick and tired of the sound of my voice, uh, and for this amazing trooper, oh, police officer there, Three minutes. Oh, lots of police coming out, folks. I guess. Oh, okay. I guess they've got police uh, stationed in horse cars today. I'm not sure why, but yeah. Here we go. Look. Oh, red commander. Actually, let me ask him. What it, what it did. Oh, too late. Let me ask him. A second. Officer, can I ask you? Can I ask you a question? What? Are those? I noticed the red things on on the chap's shoulders. First of all. Oh, he's the boss. Oh, he's the chief. He's the boss. That's ah, right. I thought you'd be the boss. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Okay, he's the boss. That's why it explains it. I forgot which rank that is, folks, in the police. The uh, the red pips. Superintendent? I seem to recall the superintendent. Uh, correct me, folks, if you know. But they're getting ready. They're going to start evacuating the yard any moment. And then this massive number of people that are hoping to go in uh, are going to be very disappointed. The gates are being closed at the back, folks. Let's uh, have our last moment in the yard before they close it all down. One gate has already been closed. See that at the end of the tunnel? We will be one of the last uh, in the yard today. I'm not going to enter the tunnel for the trooper because there's no need, it's not necessary. But there we are, gates are closed at the end of the tunnel. The light folks have just been lost at the end of the tunnel. These are the last few lucky tourists closed and locked down guys it's done and she is the very last tourist it's going to get close I think oh and here we go here comes the uh, the lockdown folks everyone's leaving we knew it was coming and here it is in full effect glad I waited around a little bit actually because it's nice to uh to get these sort of you know, unusual, not completely unique, but unusual procedural events. Here we go, uh, tour guides, everyone out. We are all being chucked out because they're about to lock it all up. Or down, depending on where you look at it. Right, here we are. Unfortunately, folks, we're going to see the normal, basically. Uh, because of the protests coming Here come the chains. Lots and lots of shouting. Uh, Everyone's being told to move back. Here's a trooper training up the gates. We'll be asked to move back. Of course, we will, obviously. Behind the bollards. Here's the lockdown, folks. We knew it was coming. We weren't sure exactly if it would be before, but it's bang on one o'clock. Here comes the last couple of horse, I believe, to retrieve the two boxmen. He should actually. I'm right up to the camera, I'm thinking, pretty much. There we go. Excuse me, stand back, please. Folks, there's a superstar of the past hour.
Troopers are locking it up, and that is it, it is done. Rear gate's locked, front gate's locked. Finito for today, guys, here at Horse Guards. Now, the good news is I'll be walking toward the genesis of the protest. <laughs> and now, the last bit, the central gate's getting locked up. At least they're all uh, smiles and so on. A bit of an activist, it would seem. Okay, so signs are being uh, taken down, obviously. Here goes number one. Well, don't forget the sign. You want to go behind them? Oh, there it is. Please help me out. And the second one. And they're done. And that, ladies and gents, is a wrap. We have ourselves back a little bit. It's a shame, actually, that the uh, <laughs> the signs are actually on the floor. One is facing into the yard, this one, uh, but the other one is facing out of the yard. We can't read it, however. These gates are a pain to actually get closed because they're uh, they're old and rickety. Actually, rickety was probably invented for these gates. I believe that the original gates uh, which makes them several hundred years old. Either that or the ironwork is uh, has deteriorated far, far faster than one would have expected. So that is the end, ladies and gents. Not the end of the video though, so hang around. Lockdown complete. Okay, so that's done. Let's head ourselves toward Westminster. We got a lot, didn't we, today, folks? Bearing in mind this is part two. Uh, some tourists are loving the fact they can get pictures in the middle of the road with horse guards as a backdrop. Why? Because that, my friends, is a backdrop and a half, is it not? That is where it all takes place. And how curious it looks when we've got no boxmen. Etc. 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 Eh? Very different. One, two. Okay, they're testing the sound stage uh, behind me. Hear that? One, two. So that's the way I'm going to walk, guys, uh, before ending the video, of course, when one, we hit two, one, two. Parliament Square. If they do start playing any music, I will cut it off pretty much straight away because music will destroy the video and we don't need that anyway, do we? Let's be honest. Lots of police, lots of stalls selling merchandise. Someone's going to be making lots of cash today. Look at them all. Actually, you know what? Let's walk a little teeny weeny bit in the in the road. It's closed, so there's no chance of uh, there being a problem. First loudspeaker system has been set up. One, two, one, two. And the main check, stage check. is being uh, sound one, sound checked. Two, <laughs> one, two. The audio is actually really good, to be honest. Check, 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 check made. Socialist Workers' Party here as well today. Oh, I think one officer, got co one officer there's got COVID. One, two, one, two. So, you know, can this announcer one, find anything else other two, than one, two to say? One, two. Maybe nine, eight. Oh my God, the food looks so good, in fact. Samosas, all kinds of food they've got over there for sale. Oh my god, that's made me super hungry. Guys, you're actually making me not go and eat amazing, delicious Middle Eastern food one, right now. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, check, yep. check. We're just going to get past this one, before it gets two. super noisy. But super chill there. Oh my gosh, look at all the food. Oh. Huh. No. Damn, it's so tasty. Delicious. Gosh, there's a lot of merchandise. I mean, this much merchandise, in fact. I think this is the most merchandise I've ever seen at one of the marches. They're expecting vast numbers. I'm actually kind of uh, 
somewhat relieved that we're going to be escaping from the central area before it all starts. So much yummy food, look at this. Oh my gosh, meatballs, kefta. Uh, kefta is one of my favorite, uh, favorite Moroccan dishes. Kefta or any tagine for that matter, <laughs> or pastilla. Okay, so luckily we've managed to get ourselves away before the protest actually arrives here because it's going to be massive. It will be a massive one. They wouldn't have set up all of this and the sound stages and so on if they were not expecting tens of thousands. So I'm going to be very comfortably uh, out of the central area <laughs> before it starts. That, ladies and gents, is a cenotaph, uh, and that right next to it is the sound stage the stalls, guest speakers and everything else. I personally don't think it should be allowed anywhere near this close to the cenotaph, but hey, what do I know? <laughs> Crazy French girl. Girl, what lady they're talking to the police uh, who were trying to be polite but they have no idea what she's talking about. Even the pubs have got uh, security staff on the door. Look. Stewards are already uh, forming up here on Parliament Square. Welcome to London, guys, 2024. Every weekend there's something. Here we have it, this is the beginning or where the stewards are forming up. Donation point, cash or contact list. Got a lot of stewards actually, haven't they? It'll be peaceful. It's definitely will be peaceful. I mean, most of these uh, marches, protests, whichever way you look at it, have been peaceful to their credit. But gosh, I feel super happy to have escaped, guys, because Wherever you look now, we're, we've reached Parliament Square. Look, even the central crossing point to get over is completely chock a block with people. Golly gosh, let's get us to the station where I'll end today's uh, video. This is part two, guys. Part one is linked in the video description uh, below the video itself. Gosh, it is mega chaotic. Look at it. Golly, golly, golly. In all directions. It's an interesting view above the bus though, guys. Look at that. Majestic. I can smell fish and chips coming from the pub on my left. It smells so good. I can't wait to go home and have... Uh, eggs and avocados. And we made it. I mean, pretty much spot on time to get out of there and also finish today's part two without major disruption. Or, the thing that was bothering me all along, music. They often play, when they're doing that sound stage test, they often play uh, 
uh, Palestinian or Moroccan songs, Arab songs and so on, uh, and famous Arab music and that all, just like Western music, is copyright on YouTube. Anyway guys, a slow and gradual pan to the top of that. And that's our closing shot. I will be back really soon people. Uh, this was part two. Don't miss part one in below. Bye for now.